it's really tempting for somebody that is on fire to start blacksmithing to think, wow, Harbor Freight's got an anvil for sale for 62 bucks and I can afford that and I'm a blacksmith. Yeah, it is tempting to think that. And it's tempting for me to think, you know, I wouldn't have one of those things in my shop because it is not an anvil, it's an anvil shaped object. It's cast iron, it is, it is soft, it is awkward, the horn is not round and I wouldn't have one in my shop. So both those things are mental mistakes. They're thinking errors. Because the fact is, as with so many other contested questions, the truth lies somewhere in between these two poles. So how to, how to sort of come to some sort of a conclusion or recommendation about a Harbor Freight Anvil? Um, I guess here's sort of the takeaway is that I made this set of tongs on this anvil. And they work and they were hard. It was, <laughs> I was tired. And I can hammer, I can work. And when I got to the end of this, I had a new blister and I didn't feel like smithing for an hour or so because it has no rebound and so it is all work. If you use a heavy hammer, you're giving up a lot of the energy. If you use a light hammer, you don't have much energy to start with, so it was work. But there's a set of tongs, which means this can be used to learn to blacksmith. So having said that, having owned up to the fact that I forged a set of tongs on a Harbor Freight anvil, I'm, I am happy to, a, to sort of assert that it's better than this. It's better than sort of a nondescript piece of railroad iron because it has a hardy hole of sorts. It has a horn, kind of. I can assert that it's better than a stake anvil. Can you see that that's a stake anvil that fits into this hardy hole? When the pioneers came west in uh, their covered wagons or their hand carts or however they came, somebody would have a stake anvil, a set of tongs, and a hammer because you could drive one of these into a stump or a log and you could forge. Well, this is probably better than that. And lives were saved and work was done on stake anvils. We have here an anvil shaped object that works, but here's what you need to understand before you spend 62 bucks for one. It's awkward. The shapes are not right, especially the horn. The horn is flat on the top, which means it's almost not a horn. It's really hard to get any kind of a smooth bend. That's item one. Item two, it's soft. I forged one set of tongs and I was careful and I have some deep hammer marks. I can see that after about a week of forging on this, there wouldn't be a spot on here that was anywhere near smooth. It has no pritchel. It has a one inch, or maybe that's a three quarter inch hardy hole, so you can, you can drip, punch and drift through that, but you're gonna have nasty square edges surrounding your penetration, and there's no pritchel. That's a problem. The next thing is, it's light. I recommend you never voluntarily buy a 55 pound piece of anything with the intention of forging on it. Having said that, you can see online guys who are taking sledgehammers and pieces of pipe and pieces of plate and welding together things and forging because we're compelled to forge. So you can do it. And I guess the long-term answer to this is if you buy one of these and then you find your dream anvil or you save your money and buy your dream anvil, you can always use this for a cutting plate. You can always have this somewhere at workbench height. So if you've got to do some something that's gonna have the possibility of marring the face or the bench of your good anvil, you can always do that here and you will never, ever feel bad about leaving a mark on the face of this thing. So this video may not have been that helpful for a beginning blacksmith. And to further maybe confirm that assertion, here's the takeaway. Can you get blacksmithing done on this anvil? Absolutely, yes. Do I recommend it? No, sorry, I can't recommend it. But if you buy one of these and start in, you will also immediately be keeping your eyes a little wider open for that antique anvil or the bargain on a new anvil that you're looking for. And it will come by. In the meantime, while you're doing that, we've posted a tool list. We've spent a lot of time, lots of time, researching what we think are the best cost-effective, high-value solutions to the questions of what tools do I really have to have to have a pretty well-equipped blacksmith shop, well enough equipped that I can make anything I need to make. The tools on this list are the real deal. They're tools that I've researched, that I've used, that I have full confidence in, including a couple of anvils, <coughs> which are modern anvils, anvils that you can buy new, off the shelf, and that are in fact anvils and not anvil-shaped objects. They're not huge, but they're big enough. They have rebound, they have the right shapes, they're the real thing, and they are more money than this, but not a lot more. 
They are an entry-level anvil that will enable you to do the work without exhausting yourself and not without facing an unnecessary difficulty, which would discourage someone if they were prone to being discouraged. So you can have confidence that the tools on our tool list for beginning to blacksmith in a serious way will be tools that you will always be glad you have. Back to this little beauty. Truth be told, I expected worse, okay? It did not let me down. Yeah, it's, it's not much, but I expected even less. I mean, we got that done and it was hard and I was tired and I was frustrated, but we got it done. I, I think in my heart of hearts, I think if I took my four pounder and hit that really hard right there, I think it would break right off. But you're never gonna do that when you're forging things and you're not gonna let the neighbor kid do it. So probably if this is what you've got to do to step into the craft, fly right at it. But never come back to me and say I didn't warn you. Thank you.